Hey everybody, today we're going to be pulling out a kitchen. We're going to be taking out all these cabinets and we're going to re be replacing them with something from Ikea. Uh, we're going to be reusing these granite countertops, but we'll be redoing the backsplash and uh, probably be reusing the sink and whatnot since it's already fit into this countertop. Now, these things tend to be kind of heavy, so I do have somebody coming to help me move them around. They're probably also brittle, so you don't want to drop them. These appliances will be moved out, and I believe there's new ones coming in. So the first step is going to be getting these countertops off. I think they're usually just kind of glued into place. This ought to be fun. All right, so after some brief investigation, I believe what's going on here is that these countertops are just, they're just sitting on these cabinets. I can't actually see any glue. I can pry these up a bit and kind of see a gap all the way around. Now that probably means they're super heavy and they are stone, so that wouldn't surprise me. Obviously they're caught underneath the uh, backsplash here, so what I need to do is kind of pull it out so I can lift and get these things off there. Probably easier said than done, but let's see what we can do. All right, so as suspected, these countertops are not siliconed or glued to the cabinets in any way, shape, or form. They basically just sit on there and kind of trapped underneath the backsplash, which, I mean, they've been here 40 years and haven't moved. These things are heavy. Uh, when I reinstall them, I'm gonna put some silicone on there just to hold them in place. Now, on a good note, while they are heavy, they aren't unmanageable. So that's a real big treat. I was kind of worried about how heavy this damn stuff was going to be. Yay! Now one side note, the backsplash is made of glass tile, and although that's granite, it is stone, the shards are sharp. I should be wearing gloves. So I do stand corrected. There was a little bit of glue on here. I think what had happened is that over 40 years it had dried out so it had let go. So I am glad to see that originally they were glued into place. Good stuff. Obviously this big L-shaped one is going to be an issue. Now it's tough to see but there is a seam here that's been filled with epoxy so I'm going to cut that seam so that I can take this out in two pieces which will be a little more manageable even for two people. So, let the fun begin. So what I suspect with this seam is it's just a filler. It's not, it's tough to see under here. But you can see that gap up there. So I think it's just decorative. So I'm wondering if I might be able to break that epoxy just by cracking these things loose. Let's find out. Before I go and try and pull these counters out, I better unhook all this plumbing or I'm going to have a real mess on my hands. This ought to be fun. Alright, so I hired myself some big strong muscle to help me move these granite countertops. Uh, for those of you who have never moved those, they are really, really heavy. Shouldn't be a surprise, they're stone. So we've got those out. Um, We've uh, we just moved this cabinet here to support that one countertop while we got it off there. Basically, we got the appliances out, we got the countertops off, we're ready to start ripping things out. But before we do that, and I should have done this a bit earlier, um, I want to cover these floors because this tile is going to stay. And of course, I'm probably going to be working a bit in here where there's some hardwood. So I'm going to cover the floor with something protective. And what that stuff is, is I bought myself a roll of this stuff. And it's basically just a heavy duty cardboard. That way I can wear my shoes. I'm not gonna, you know, step on nails and stuff like that. What's it called there? Ram board. And uh, protects the floor, protects my feet. Uh, everybody happy. So we're gonna lay a bunch of that down.
All right, so we got this round board on the floor, so now we can walk around in our, our shoes, protect our feet, but we can also protect the floor. It is tile, but tile can chip. Uh, hardwood, as you see here, is gonna be damaged more easily. However, this client was smart and saved some old carpet underlay. Uh, a bit soft, we laid down a bunch of cardboard to put the granite on, so hopefully we didn't do any damage there. But, uh, we are ready to let the fun begin. We're going to rip out some cabinets now. Yeehaw. So one thing before we go too crazy, we better shut the fuse off to that before we start ripping it out and snipping wires. Definitely don't feel like electrocuting myself. So in addition to these cabinets being screwed into, I'm hoping, studs, they're also screwed to each other. So just make sure you get all these screws out. Preferably take these ones out first, and then you can take these back and top and bottom ones out later. And then you don't have a cabinet just hanging dangerously. So keep an eye out for that. So these next few cabinets are going to be fun. As you can see, I've got a little bit of uh, plumbing and electrical to go around. And that drain pipe... extends back there, so... It's going to be fun. Looks like she had a rodent problem at one time. Which I think she was aware of and fixed it, I hope. Now over on this side... We just gotta take out these supports because there's gonna be new cabinets going in here. And I'll take out these baseboards so that I can cut them and I'll reinstall them later. This should be easy. That won't be too terrible to get the old stuff out, but it's gonna be bare to get the new stuff in. I may have to cut that to get this uh, this particular cabinet out, especially getting the new one in, and then reassemble it. Oh joy! Alrighty, we got all the basic cabinets out. Now, 
what we're gonna do is get rid of this backsplash. Now, there's varying opinions on this. If you get the right knife, you can get it behind there and pop these guys off, blah, blah, blah. Nope. You're gonna damage that drywall to some extent, no matter what you do. And in my opinion, the easiest thing to do is gonna be just to cut it out, put in new drywall, mud and tape it. It will be hidden behind new backsplash and or cabinets, so make your life easy, get a drywall knife, cut that stuff out of there. Besides, demolition is fun. All right, so there's how you remove your backsplash. You just do the rest. Just do the same on the other walls. Now, people are probably wondering, hey, what's going on here? You only got five, six inches of backsplash there. Why'd you cut out all that? Well, putting a new piece of drywall in and then trying to finish it with only this much area to blend around these, these receptacles is a massive pain. Up here, I've got all this space, which will be hidden behind cabinets to blend in this new drywall. This will be hidden in behind cabinets. This should all be covered by backsplash. No receptacles in my way. I'm not a professional drywall finisher. I'm okay at it. But this just makes life easier for me, which is why I do it. So, I'm not gonna try and remove tile. Yank out the drywall, new drywall, go to town. It's that simple. All right, so this spot gives me a little bit of a uh, conundrum here because I'm coming around to a corner. These corners are gonna be metal, and for me to try and cut out a metal corner here, I'm gonna make a big mess of it. So what I've done is I've taken my chisel and I've popped off these tiles. Now, that's about as good as tiles are gonna come off. And you can see that's still gonna require some work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut down here do my patch in and this will be all blended in once I put my new drywall in. So this is one of the few times I will actually keep old drywall and uh, try and patch it. But it's still gonna be a massive pain. It's gotta be flattened out. Uh, get some of that mortar off there, all that kind of fun stuff. That's why I just replaced drywall. I always love opening up walls in old houses because you never know what you're gonna find. Here's an electrical box. No wires coming into it, I'm guessing maybe this was its replacement. They just mud and taped over it and left it there rather than pulling it out, probably because it was installed once the drywall was in. So, it's part of the drywall. We're gonna just leave it there. Okay, so as you can see, some of the walls are interior, no insulation, and some of the walls are exterior with insulation. Now also, this vapor barrier is very important. It keeps air from flowing uh, outside to in. And obviously when I was cutting drywall, I have perforated this. So what I'm gonna use is a bunch of that red tuck tape to patch these holes because we want this to be sealed right up. We don't want a bunch of cold air in the winter or really hot air in the summer coming in. So we wanna make sure this is all properly patched up. So let's do that. All right, so I've patched all the holes I made in the vapor barrier. You're gonna notice uh, this guy's kind of hanging by himself, but this is one of those boxes that you can attach to the drywall. I think it was put in as an afterthought for the uh, garburetor. And obviously this house was built before a lot of particular uh, specifications were brought in. I've taped around these electrical boxes. There was sort of plastic all around, tried to seal them up. New ones, there's like a plastic envelope you basically put around these and they all seal up, so. Uh, hopefully it stopped most of the airflow, but anyway, now, time to put in some drywall. All right, so we're gonna start putting in some drywall. Now, obviously I've got a couple studs here I can get screws into, but where I cut this, the stud is, you know, quite a bit in there. So I just took a little chunk of three quarter inch plywood and uh, just screwed in both sides. That'll give this more than enough support because the drywall isn't structural. 
so that way I don't have to cut all the way back here to find a stud. Um, now when I'm putting these in, I've got this little specific tip in my drill that'll put the drywall screws in, you know, just the right amount of depth to dimple it a bit so that you can cover them with mud. Uh, if you are really good at drywall, you'll see the guys, they don't use these special attachments, they just, they're that good at it. I'm not, but that's fine. Alright, let's put some drywall in. Alright, so we got the drywall in, obviously now we have to start completing seams. You'll notice here I've got a bit of a large gap. Uh, this was just a touch over 8 feet, I'll fill it with mud. I've got a couple little repairs to do here as I mismeasured a bit, but basically it's in, it can be finished. So what I'm going to do now <clears throat> is I'm going to use fiberglass tape over the uh, basic seams here because I can get the mud through it. And then in the corners, I'm going to use paper tape. So we're going to start getting all the fiberglass stuff on because it's self-stick. Alright, so we got that first layer of mud on. We embedded the tape. Now this stuff's supposed to set in about 40 minutes, I'll probably give it an hour, and then basically I'm just going to go and go through with one of my uh, drywall knives there, and just get any little, you know, ridges and stuff off, I'm not going to sand it, and then we're going to put the second layer on. I'm hoping to get the second layer on today so that can cure, give it a light sanding tomorrow and maybe put on a finish and a skim coat. So now we wait, and while we wait, we're going to go downstairs and investigate all the cabinets and make sure we got everything we need. All right, so we got that second coat of mud on there. We're just going to let that cure. Tomorrow I'll start using the unsanded drywall mud, which gives you a much smoother finish. And uh, we'll hopefully get a nice coat on this. We'll give it a light sanding before we do that. It's starting to come together. Okay, so after letting this mud cure overnight, we're now going to give it a light sanding. Maybe take one of the drywall knives and just chip off these ridges and edges and stuff. And we're going to throw on a third coat. And it uh, won't be the last coat. We're just going to smooth this out a little bit more and get it ready for the final coat. All right, so now we're going to do a little bit of sanding. Now I've got a nice fresh 150 grit on my sander here. And the idea is we're not going to be sanding this thing right down. You don't, you don't want to do that because what will happen is you'll, you'll damage the paper on the drywall. All we're going to do is try and get some of these little rough edges off. The idea with this next coat is we're going to sort of smooth things out. We've, we've put all these other coats on to sort of fill holes, fill gaps make all these butt joints as smooth as possible. And uh, now we just want to smooth it out. You do not want to over sand. If you are over sanding, you're putting too much mud on. Now again, I'm no expert, so I may end up over sanding just because of my lack of ability, but we'll get her ready for the next coat here. Okay, so we're kind of ready for another coat of this mud here. Now, as I've stated many times previously, I am no expert at finishing drywall. It takes me probably two or three times as long as the experts just to even get it half as good as them. However, in this particular case, the beauty is, is all of my work is going to be hidden behind 
cabinets or backsplash. So, I mean, it doesn't need to be perfect, but it does need to be done, and this is a good opportunity to practice. So, let's take that opportunity. All right, today's life hack, if you're sneaking cocaine across the border, wear it. Maybe they won't see it that way. All right, we have the kitchen ready for a coat of paint. Client says they're gonna do that this weekend, which is perfect. That means I can start hanging cabinets Monday, Alright, so client came in and painted up the kitchen, so we are basically ready to start putting in some cabinets. Now obviously it's not going to be just a matter of throw them in, uh, no floor is perfectly level, no corners are perfectly square, so we're going to have to do a little measuring around just to see where we want to start. Uh, obviously when we get to the kitchen sink and drain here, we've got a few plumbing things we got to work around, plus we got a vent and a little bit of electrical for a potential carburetor, among other things. Let's hook up for your dishwasher. So, we are ready to begin reconstruction of this.